Hello everyone, I am Ranga Prasad. Today I am going to explain about my new invention which is called as Ballastic Negatron Battery. So, batteries play a very important role in everyone's life. By designing a battery, we consider a few things. One is its size, shape and its weight and its wear level and its scope of industrialization. My battery excels in all the above mentioned things. So let us see how, how it works and why it is so special for me and why it is very innovative. Let me first explain to you about its working principle. It works on the principle of Lorentz force. What Lorentz force says is, when moving electron comes into a perpendicular magnetic field, it experiences a force which is perpendicular to both moving motion of the electron and its magnetic field. Now in this figure what I am going to show is the movement of my electron and the element of the north and south poles. So now assume an electron is coming into this field, what actually happens? So it experiences a tangential force. As a result of it, when there is an infinite magnetic field, it go on moves in a circular loops. So which intend the electron to be rotated in the circular loops. This is called as the Lorentz force. Now instead of a single electron, uh, let us ex assume a finite number of electrons that is called as an electron beam. When the same electron beam comes into this magnetic field, it, let us assume the length of the electron beam is very less. This, when it comes into this magnetic field, uh, even these electron beams also rotates in a circular loops and they all uh, revolve in the parti particular radius, so which is given by the formula m e square by r is equal to b q v. Now, let us come to its constructional features. My battery mainly consists of three parts. One is the charging part and second is the HE module which is called as the holding the energy module and third is the discharging part. So let me explain you about the each and every part. The first part which is called as charging part is a cylindrical metallic cylinder so which has an electron gun which is embedded inside it. And the second one is a vacuum chamber, complete vacuum chamber which is called as HE module, holding energy module. And the third one is the discharging part. So it has some type of conductor inside it. I will explain you that later in this video. These are uh, constructional features of my battery now coming to its operation and working so i said that the part one which is shown in the above image the part one consists of an electron gun so what did electron gun produces is a beam of electrons so i said that there is a vacuum inside the part two right so when the moving electron comes into this chamber two so as the one chamber one is fixed to the chamber 2 when these moving electrons are going to enter in this, into this chamber 2 so this chamber 2 has such a type of the future that alignment that it has a north magnetic field which is coming from the top boards or south magnetic field is coming at the bottom boards that means a north and south magnets or a horseshoe magnet is placed onto the surface of it so as according to my principle the electron has to be rotated as i said earlier now the tangential force occurs onto this so as a result of this the electron bends and it's going to be rotated in a particular radius that means the electron is going to be confined so what i'm doing is i'm making the electron to be confined to a particular region so the electron which is in the motion that is called as it has some energy now i'm trapping the energy into a particular area this is called as energy storage that is what i may call it as a battery so now instead of the single electron now let us consider a beam of electrons now the beam of electrons enters into the region 2 it experiences the same force and it is going to be rotated in a particular radius so now assume the length of the beam of electron is less than the 2 pi r in which they are going to be rotated and the velocity of the electron and the radius it is going to be projected it will be taken care of these path regulators which is what actually we see in our televisions old televisions the cathode ray tube televisions now the speed is regulated and the radius is also regulated with the help of this electron gun. The speed of the electron is in our control and the radius we are going to project is in our control. Now in this image what I am going to show is it is having uh, these are called as the beam of electrons revolving in different radii. So how this can be done? So when we vary the potential difference across the 
electron gun so where there is an accelerator which is also al already embedded inside it so when we vary this voltage the speed is varied and when we vary the voltage across the path regulators the direction is also varied that means we can project an electron into the required paths and we can make the particular number of electrons to be conferred in different particular radius so in this way we are going to for example so the first beam of electron is going to project in the radius r and the next one is going to project in r plus 1 and the next one goes to r plus 2 and so on to the radius of our container so now i have explained only about the radius so uh, we have different layers even that means so in the similar way we can do for the different radius layers so let us assume the battery is placed on the ground level so at the ground level it has the one layer at the ground level plus one it has one layer ground level plus two it has a one layer so these are the very small units and uh, the plus one plus two are defined regarding of the considering many considerations so i can't explain that in a video i have to show that very clearly so for different radius and different layer or where everywhere we have an electron which are revolving in particular directions that means a huge amount of the energy is going to be confined so this is called as my battery so now i have said that he module the he module is the circular path what i have said this is called as he module with expansion is holding energy module now coming to its discharging how we are going to discharge so we have a huge amount of the energy confined inside it. so the discharging part is the cnt which is called as the carbon nanotube so this cnt has an such a excellent feature that it has a ballastic conduction so when a electron is projected onto it it will conduct that electron so this is a extraordinary property for the cnt which i am going to use here so now let us have a cnt which is going to be injected into this he module so when an electron hits this cnt it's going to be conduct so now what i do is i'll first insert the cnt onto the exterior part of this battery and then discharge all the electrons which are going to be present at the outermost layers so when these layers are discharged i will go to the next r minus 1 layer r minus 2 layer r minus 3 layers and similarly for the different layers so this is how i am going to discharge and this is a controlled discharge not an uncontrolled discharge see while explaining this you may have a doubt called as the synchrotron effect this synchrotron effect you may think that it may affect these electrons the electrons are no more confined to a particular region so they will all gradually collapse to this towards the center so this battery is not going to work so that's not what is going to happen here so i have taken care in such a way that so when the magnetic field is it was shielded for a magnetic field that means the inside magnetic field produced by the electrons cannot go the outside so if it is going to produce a magnetic field exterior then the energy is lost in that such way so it is not going to send exteriorly and if one electron is going to send one amount of magnetic field due to the rotation in the circular loop it is going to be absorbed by the next, next electron which is present in rotating the same loops and the energy it is going to be lost in this process is very 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 less so it might be happen that it may lose it will definitely lose its radius but it is very very less for one day it might uh, lose in point not one centimeters so it might be quite big but is not considerable and uh, the final thing is estimated model calculations so let me surprise you regarding these things so i have considered a battery and a more considered model whose has an inner radius of 2.1 meters and outer radius of 2.5 meters so these inner radius and outer radius means the inner radius of an he module and the outer radius of the he module so now assume that he module in the shape of a donut so now i consider its height that means its thickness it's going to be 0.25 meters so that is going to be very big but so let us see how much amount of energy it can store so by my process so this all can be calculated this this all calculated theoretically and multiplied with the practical factors and the final outcome is uh, very 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 surprising so let me first tell you about total amount of energy in the entire battery assuming only one portion of the conversion efficiency from the rotation of the electron to the what carbon nanotube so it's called as 3.59248 into 10 power 18 joules you had it right 10 power 18 joules 
and the total amount of power in the entire battery assuming only one percent of the conversion efficiency is 9.97 into 10 power 14 watts into 10 power 14 watts so this is very 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 huge amount of energy we can store and the energy density so that is 2.4878 into 10 power 18 joules per meter square so quite a quite most advanced than the most advanced battery what we have now so i have said that it has zero wear level why it is at zero level because there is nothing to hold here so the nothing to nothing which can lose its capability holding the electrons so it has a zero wear level so negligible weight so let me first say you the weight of the above battery we had our calculator it's 6711670004 kg so it means 6,71,167,000 kg 167 kg so you had it right it is 671,000 nearly kg so it's very very huge but why I'm saying it's very very negligible so if we consider the same battery it will be more than a thousand billion tons yeah it will be thousand billion tons so it can be charged in a very very less time because the number of electrons we are going to eject from this electron gain is quietly controlled when the number beam of electrons are going to be increased we can control its charging process and we have control even under the discharging process and we have control over everything so we can have to build a what is feedback path to each and everything from the charging part to the discharging part then it is going to work perfectly so i did not explain everything in a clear but i have given you an outline so and i have left you many considered things explaining in this video because of my ip rights and you know that uh, better than me so this is what called as my ballastic negatron battery and thanking you for watching this video thanks bye